Welcome everyone, my name is Lisa and today on Down at the Property we're going to be pressure canning some hamburger. I just want to show you how I set up. Everybody probably does it different, but I have the meat over here. I got four packages of 90% ground beef. I have my wide mouth jars here. I have 12. If I need more than 12, I will have to switch over to the regular mouth. Just, you know something? Just use what you have in the house. Jar lifters, funnel, kosher salt with nothing added to it. This is an optional step. I have rings, lids, and I also have paper towels and vinegar to wipe the rims, as well as the measuring device and the debubbler. And I'm using the All American 921 canner today. So let's just get, let's just jump right in and get started. And we're going to be doing the raw pack method today. Let me just push these some of these out of the side. And I'm going to show you how easy this is. I've done this before. I know it's like trust me, I've done this before. Now I'm just going to take, make sure your hands are clean, wash your hands to make sure they're clean. And this is 90% ground beef and I'm just going to take, take it and I'm just going to, I use the funnel to protect the, the rim just a bit. That might be a bit too much. I'm just going to push it down into the jar. I'll do a few of these just so you can see and watch and then I'll finish up the rest of them off camera. Let me just go in here and you try to get rid of these pockets. Sometimes it's very difficult to get rid of the pockets, but you just do the best you can. Sometimes I use the back of a wooden spoon, which I think I'm going to switch to. But we're just trying to get rid of all the bubbles in here. And you can wear gloves if you don't like to touch uh, fresh meat. That's fine. Got a bubble down there. All right, we're gonna put a little bit more in here. Not much, because you wanna leave one inch of head space. Very important that you leave that head space in there. And this handy dandy measuring device, just got junk on the rim. The one inch right there. So we're just a bit, we'll make it with this one. But if you're not comfortable with it, you can just take some of this hamburger out, press it down and remeasure. But this is your measuring device on this end. But usually an inch is below this lip right here an inch is below that lip right there. So I'm just gonna put that one off to the side. I'll do one more with you and then I will finish up the rest of them. And this is just how easy canning hamburger really is. And I like using 90% because there's less fat in the meat and there'll be less fat on the top. Because I will show you one where I used 80%. I think I have one. Just so you can see the difference between the 90 and the 80% meat. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish these up. Next step, I'm going to put in about a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. This is personal preference. You don't have to add any salt. I'm just doing just a little bit in each jar, not much at all. And make sure the salt that you're using has nothing in it, no anti-caking agents. You just want pure salt. Now you can put up to, I think they recommend, not recommend, but they, you see a lot of recipes, they usually say like a half a teaspoon. I'm not gonna add that much this time. Next up, you're going to take a paper towel. I moistened it with vinegar. And you're just gonna go around the rim with with this cloth. Vinegar is very important. It cuts through the fat if there's any fat on the rim. See how that? Look at that. That's a prime example right there. So I'm just going to take that off. And what I do, what I do is just fold it over. If I have to use another paper towel, I do. You can use a cloth, but I've always used paper towels. If I couldn't get my hands on paper towels, I would definitely use cloths. And, you know, I probably should. 
All right, so I'm gonna go around and do all this. Next up, what I do, I'm gonna take my lids. These are the newer ones, so they don't need to go into hot water. These are all the wide mouth. Let me separate these out. I'm just gonna put them right on top. I know, I'm so used to putting these in hot water. And I just wanna show you this real quick. I usually store my rings on bungee cords, but I found these stiff, I can just twist it around. And then what I do is you just create a hook right here, or you can wrap it around like a shelf. I usually hang these from either in the basement off one of the shelves, or I hang it up here in the laundry room. So when I need these, I can just go in there and grab them. But I thought it's nice. The bungee cords are nice. That's what I first started using, but now I use this. Up next, we're gonna go ahead and put rings on. Whoops, that one, sometimes they don't go on nice. There we go, only finger tight, like two finger tight. That's all you're gonna do. And this is how fast doing, especially like brown beef, meat you have to cut up before, or you can put them in, you know, quite large size. But this is how fast that you can can meat. Very, very quick. Next up, now I put, there's about one and one half to two inches of water. I measure it with my finger from here to here. So it's probably like two inches of water. The book, follow your manufacturer's instructions on how much water to add. And I did put in a little bit of vinegar. I'll just put, there, I'll just put a little bit more in just to show you that step. I didn't want you to miss that. The only reason for the vinegar is because it'll prevent cloudy jars. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the wide mouths on the bottom. Just fill up your canner. And also, I wanna tell you that this is room temperature water. It's not hot and it's not ice cold. Got those in there. Gonna go, we're gonna do a second layer here. Let's see how many we can get in here. If I can do one more, I'll just whip off one more really quick. Nope, it looks like we're going to be full up, if I can get this one in there. That's yeah, a little tight, but it should work. Let's see. Yeah, there's room. So the canner is full. I'm going to go ahead and take my lid. Oh, wait a minute. I wanted to do this. I wanted to show you guys this. That's olive oil. Where's my avocado? Here we go. I am going to put a little bit of oil on my finger. I haven't used this in a bit, so I do want to oil the ledge right here. You can use any oil that you want. I'm just using some avocado oil. Beautiful. I wonder if I should take one out. It's making me a bit nervous. I think I'm going to keep one out just in case, because the jars, I don't know, might be a bit too close together. So, yeah, I'm going to, I'll just have to um, take the hamburger out of that one. Go ahead and close it. Always listen to your gut when canning. Actually, listen to your gut with everything. There's an arrow here. There's a little dimple here. Line it up. That means the hook is underneath that hook right there. I'm going to go ahead. You're going to go across from one another with these toggles. I'm not sure what you call them, but I call them toggles. And you want to make sure, like, try to even up the lip right here. And don't tighten them down all the way. All right, we're looking good. Pretty much even. Now just go down and tighten them down. You don't have to go, ugh, just tighten them down like finger tight. I'm going to reach back and I'm going to turn the heat on high. Now we have to wait until steam starts coming out of here and then we got to vent this for 10 minutes. 10 minutes is going by, so now we're going to go ahead and add the weight. At my elevation, which is like 200 and something feet, I'm going to go ahead and use 10 pounds of pressure. I'm going to leave a link in the description to like Google Maps and that can give you your elevation because it's very important that you have the proper pounds per pressure. Now over here, <clears throat> we're about up to three on the gauge. So I want that up to and then we can start the timer. As you can see, we're almost there. We're there right now. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go over and adjust my heat. And I'm pretty good at, like you get to know your stove. I know exactly where to put it pretty much. And that's what you wanna hear. 
You wanna hear that periodically, that jiggle, jiggle, jiggle noise? Now I can start the timer. And we're gonna process this for 75 minutes. So the 75 minutes has gone by, what I'm gonna do is shut the heat off to the stove. You're not gonna to touch anything. You're just gonna let it naturally go down in temperature. You're gonna watch this gauge. You want this gauge to go down to zero. So the dial gauge is down to zero. We can go ahead and remove the weight. Don't use your hands. That's just the rest of the steam escaping. Now what I usually do, you can let this sit because it's chilly willy here. Um, it's chilly willy. The house is cool. Like I, I always gauge it by my butter. My butter is room temperature. It's soft, but it's not like soft like it is in the summer. It's fall here, so the house is cooler. So what I usually do, you can go ahead and loosen these toggles up. And I'd probably leave the lid on for about five minutes because what, what's gonna happen, there's gonna be a dramatic change in air temperature and you, you will get siphoning. And we're just gonna prevent that. Okay, this has been sitting for about five minutes. I'm gonna take the lid off and put it to the side. Then watch out for the steam and the dripping water. There it is, all canned up. Look at that, still bubbling away. I'm still gonna let it sit because I can see it's bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. Look at that one. I'm just gonna let it get a little bit more acclimated and then I'll be back. All right, let's check these guys out. Look at that, beautiful. What I like to do, I put them on the counter. I always put a cloth on the counter. Now what we're gonna do, I like to let these sit overnight, let them cool on the counter, and you wanna hear the pinging. You wanna make sure they all seal, and before I go to bed tonight, because it is nighttime, I will check to make sure these all sealed. If one didn't seal, what I'm gonna do is let it cool a little bit and then I'll just pop it in the fridge and we'll use it right away. Now stay tuned to the end, that's what we wanna hear, the pinging. So it's the next day, I'm gonna take the rings off. I did check the lids last night before I went to bed and they all sealed. But I always check them again just in case. I just make sure they're all down. The next step, what I do, I take a dishcloth with soapy water and I wipe off the jar. I wipe the top off because sometimes fat can be up there. But you're just wiping the jars off so you don't get like any um, mold growth or any kind of bacterial growth on the jars when they're put into storage. And usually I just let them air dry, but just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna wipe the top off. You can use tape, but I just take a Sharpie and I just write what it is. I'm gonna put hamburger, or you put ground beef, and 10, 20. Just like that. And that's all I do. But I did promise you, I'm gonna actually open up one of these. I'm gonna do, I'll probably use it for dinner this evening, but I do wanna show you what these look like. But before I do that, in regard to storage, I like to store these in my basement. Um, people say a basement can be moist. I do have a dehumidifier going on there. It's just set and it's set up to like automatic drainage. So whenever the humidity hits a certain point, it kicks on and takes the humidity out of the air. And it's been working fine for like the last, golly, 10, 20 years. I'm on my second one, but I continuously have one down there. So let's just, let's open a jar of this because everybody wants to know what the hamburger looks like and tastes like. I'm gonna go ahead and open one of these. I'm trying to open them more carefully so I can actually use them to do uh, my dehydrated veg and stuff. Let me go up here to this lip. I hope to be able to get this knife underneath here. I don't know, maybe. There we go. You heard the whooshing. And I didn't have the point where usually when I do with the can opener, it, put, it almost punctures it. So I just have a little bit of damage right here. I just wanna make sure you can see that. So I just wanna make sure I can reuse this for like dehydrating vegetables and stuff when I put the dehydrated vegetables in the jars. And then I always look at it, smell it, but there's a nice close-up of what it looks like. 
And a lot of times what I do, since I've already used this knife, I take the fat out. I don't throw it away right away, just in case if I need it for like a recipe or something. And to be honest with you, I am a little shocked by how much fat is on these. This is supposed to be 90%. Yeah, that's a lot of fat. I'm used to when you get 90%, it's not that bad. Since I'm right-handed, I just want you to see this. There's, see that juice coming out? You don't want to throw that out. And here, I can actually take it out in a big clump just like this. This is why I like the wide mouth jars. And do you see the gelatin in the bottom? I'm just going to shake it a bit so you can see it. Now, if I was using this for a recipe, I would use that. But since I'm just showing you what this looks like. And it breaks apart easily. But this is what it looks like right here. This is the texture of it. And I didn't add a lot of salt to this, but I am going to take a taste for you guys. And if you want, you can always do the smell test again. I mean, this is less than 24 hours old, but you always want to make sure when you take jars from the basement. Okay, here goes. Definitely, definitely needs salt. Um, it tastes fine. And most of the time I don't eat this plain. I usually mix this with something like my cheesy, uh, my cheesy taco pasta, spaghetti and meatballs, a shepherd's pie, something like along those lines. But look, this makes, look, look at how much meat's in there. That's a ton of meat. But I just figured you guys would like to see the texture of it up close and personal. There it is right there. Thanks everybody for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notifications button. I just want to thank everybody, thank everybody for watching my videos and I appreciate it. Take care everybody.